this this whole idea of studying about nonviolence and nonviolent change came to me as a student of history and through my own students that I was teaching. So teaching world history, seeing the textbooks of world history and not finding, you know, the role of nonviolence in creating social and political change was very disturbing to me. Everybody knows the name of Martin Luther King. Everybody has heard about civil rights movement. But when you begin to talk to them about nonviolence, when you begin to ask them, did you ever read King's Pilgrimage to Nonviolence, the essay? No, they have no idea what was this pilgrimage. They have no idea how King came to nonviolence. They will read about civil rights movement. They might read about his letter from Birmingham jail. They might read about his Nobel speech that he gave. But they don't go to this pilgrimage to nonviolence because nonviolence has, not, has been as if it is, it is something that you have allergy with. Everybody talks about civil rights movement without nonviolence, uh, except for James Lawson, who actually talks about the principle of nonviolence and what does it mean, the philosophy of it, and why we should do that. I think um, whether it is Beijing Nonviolence Group or the Gene Sharp Group, or to some extent, even Bernard Lafayette's group, they focus more on tactics, on strategic nonviolence. Uh, my idea was to bring about generational change and generational change by exposing our youngsters within the mainstream. The AMSA Center, as I envisioned it, had three different areas of focus. One was to create uh, programs for our own students, undergraduates on campus. And for them, I created a collaborative program in which nearly 10 departments on campus participate, a minor in nonviolent studies, so that we have that degree program on our campus. That was one part, so that students are exposed. So there are courses from history, from English, from political science, from um, philosophy, from uh, kinesiology, a course on yoga and uh, stress management. It was suggested to me that why don't we create, we meaning we on campus, create curriculum on nonviolence and send it to the schools. And I didn't like that idea because that would be an imposition on the teachers. Uh, and teachers are already overburdened. And how the hell are they going to teach something just because a curriculum is given to them without their own understanding about the thing. So I felt that the teachers should be treated as agents of change themselves. And if I created a professional development program for teachers, we could do two things with the same program. We could provide the opportunity for teacher leaders to immerse themselves in the study of nonviolence. And then they can create the curriculum for their own students the way they see it fit, which would be consistent with the idea of nonviolence. They have not only em are empowering their students with this powerful content that they have integrated into their uh, uh, curriculum, but they've also created, you know, pedagogical shifts uh, in teaching in the classroom, in classroom management, so that there are less problems occurring within their classroom. The students are less resentful uh, in what is going on within the classroom. There is less conflict occurring with the administration among them. So those are some of the positive things that they see in their own classrooms and in their own professional lives. Uh, there are nearly 18 or 19 um, teachers who have uh, contributed essays to a volume that two of the former fellows have co-edited, and it is in proofs right now, uh, America's Teachers Teaching Nonviolence. Without trying, we cannot, you know, uh, say that nonviolence doesn't work or that it only works for Gandhi or it only works for King, it cannot work for us. No, it can work, but you know, maybe it can work for us in baby steps. It doesn't have to be, you know, a huge vision of changing the world or changing a society, but you can start it from yourself or your own surroundings. 